Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video I'm mould making. I'm using Pure Mould from Resin Pro and I'm making handles so that I can make my own handles to complement my display trays or my serving trays. So that's one thing which I'm making. I'm also making a mould for a little jar because Resin Pro also sent me some phosphorescent powders and they came in little bags and I wanted something to put the powders into and I thought if I made a little jar I could use the powder to colour the lid and the lid would be a good reference to what's inside the jar. So that's another thing I'm making today. It's quite a long video because I'm also showing you how I made the handles once the mould was made and the same with the jar. This jar glows in the dark, so if you wait till the end, you'll get to see it glowing in the dark and it's really quite cool. So there's quite a lot in today's video. Feel free to fast forward. I don't mind at all. And I hope you enjoy. So as I said, today I'm making moulds and I'm using Pure Mould from Resin Pro. I've never used it before and I have made mould making videos before but I've never used this silicon so I'm looking forward to seeing the results. I'm also going to be using these handles which I got from Amazon and a jar which I found in my cosmetics drawer and I'm, so I'm going to be making handles and jars. And the reason I'm making the jars is because Resin Pro have also sent me some phosphorescent powders, but they came in little sachets and I wanted containers to put them in. So I thought if I make a mould of a small container, then I can make the lid out of the powder, the, so using the powder in the resin so that I can see the colour on the lid of the jar. So that's the idea. I've also got a ceramic tile and some aluminium tape, which you may have seen me using in my other videos. If you've seen my other videos, you will have seen me using this tape. It's so good. It's really, really, really sticky, and that's why I'm using it. The biggest hurdle I've come across in mould making is having the liquid silicon seeping underneath the object which I'm moulding. I really, really don't like it when that happens because although you can trim off the little extra bits, it it leaves like a jagged edge even if you've trimmed it off neatly and then when you, you cast something in that mould, that jagged edge can transfer into your casting. So I hate to get that. I really have a thing about, an issue about it now. So that is why... The most important thing I would say about making your mould in this way, I mean there's loads of different ways of making moulds, but this kind of mould, the most important thing is to make sure it's really, really stuck down to whatever it is you're using. You might use vinyl or another kind of tape, whatever it is, give it a really, really, really good rub. I'm rubbing it against the surface of the tile here. Make sure it's extra secure and the, there's nowhere for the liquid silicon to leak under. And it might seem like it takes a lot of time that you don't need to be wasting, but it really isn't a waste of time. It will make your mould so much neater in the end. So they're stuck down. And now what I'm going to do, because it's sticky side up, it's not stuck to that tile, I'm going to use some general purpose sticky tape and just tape it down to the tile to keep it nice and flat. One thing that's really important to consider when you're thinking of what you're going to make a mould from is whether it's got a flat surface because if you're making this kind of mould it does need to have a flat surface and that's what the surface which will stick to the base and will eventually be the opening of your finished mould where you will pour your resin or plaster or whatever you're using into. 
You also need to consider the shape of the thing you're making a mould from because you've got to think ahead. You need to think, is this going to come out of the mould? Is there anything on it that's going to get trapped in the mould and it will never come out again? <laughs> you do kind of need to get your brain around how the mould making works. For instance, the inside of your bottle really needs to have vertical sides or nearly vertical sides don't get don't try to mold something like this if it hasn't got vertical sides because you're not going to get the pot out of the mold once you have your object nice and secure on your tile it's time to make a barrier to contain the silicon when you pour it in for your barrier, you could use a plastic tub or a cardboard box covered in tape or cookie cutters. I've seen people use those as well. I prefer to make my own just because that way you can tailor make it to the size of the thing you're moulding. And that way you avoid wasting too much silicon by having lots and lots of negative space. You can keep it nice and snug if you're making your own made to measure barrier. <laughs> And I'm using foam board because I had some off cuts, but you could use pretty much anything. And I've cut it all to size so that it's deep enough, just a bit deeper than it needs to be. And all the right size, just putting them all together on the piece of tape. So then all I have to do is trim, it, trim the excess tape off and put it into position. And it's nice and easy. Once you've put it into position, you need to use some hot melt glue to seal the sides and hold the barrier in position. Be very, very thorough. <laughs> but trust me, I've learned this from experience. You need to put lots and lots of glue, hot melt glue around the edges because it might look like you've completely sealed the edges, but the liquid silicon is so thin that it can escape through the tiniest little hole. So use lots and lots. Don't be, don't be scared about using too much. Just be really generous with it because it's only cheap, isn't it? That those those glue sticks that you get for hot melt glue guns. I think you can get them from the pound shop. Loads of them. They're really cheap. So just use loads. Oh, and another thing. Keep it on. Have have it switched on for when you start pouring your silicon in. Because if you notice any silicon escaping, you can just wipe it off and quickly add some more glue to stop the leak. So make sure you keep it on for that part. Oh, and another thing. I keep remembering things. <laughs> another thing. Make sure you know the tape that you put on your barrier. Obviously. Uh, it seems obvious to me, but it might not be obvious to everybody, but make sure that's on the inside of the barrier because that's the bit you want your silicon to touch. It makes it really nice and easy to take the barrier off the mould afterwards. So now it's ready for the silicon. I did exactly the same thing with the two handles and I'm not going to go through it all again because that would be boring. I'm just going to speed through me doing exactly the same thing with the handles and then we're going to try out this new silicon, well I say new, it's new to me, the new uh, silicon rubber. Okay, so they were ready and I needed to know how much silicon um, solution to mix up. So I filled both of these with rice and then I poured the rice from there into a measuring jug so that I could see what volume I would need. It worked quite well doing it that way but I actually ran out of the solution, mixed up solution, um, so I should have made a little bit extra than the rice told me to make. <laughs> I can't remember exactly uh, what my measurement was because this was filmed a while ago and I'm now narrating it and putting it all together and it's 
gone from my mind. But for instance, if it was 300 millilitres of rice that I got in there, I would be doing 150 millilitres of the silicon part A and also 150 millilitres part B because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So just make sure whatever you need, both parts are exactly the same volume. Or weight, I believe you can um, do this by weight as well. So yeah, nice and easy, just make sure it's the same. Now, once you've got them both measured out, you need to mix and mix and mix and mix and mix until you're so fed up of mixing. Because with this silicon solution, they're both the same colour. Some that you get, the catalyst will be coloured and it makes it really easy for making sure that the mixture is completely mixed because you can do it until all the streaks of colour have gone but there's no colour in this there may be a way of colouring it I don't really know um, but because there's no colour and you just can't tell you've just got to keep mixing and keep mixing I would say if you can mix for around five minutes Once mixed, pure mold silicon rubber has a working time of around 40 to 50 minutes so it gives you plenty of time to get your job finished and I don't really think you would need that long. You, you probably only need about five minutes but it's great that it's got a long working time. And it vulcanises at room temperature so you don't need to put it anywhere, just leave it in your room and after three to four hours you'll be able to demold it. One thing I have forgotten to mention is you will need to wear some gloves to protect your hands and the good thing is that Resin Pro send gloves with the moulding solution so that's a nice little free gift. It was time to pour the silicone in but then I suddenly realised that I hadn't blocked the holes, the screw holes at the bottom of the handles and I wanted to do that so I'm just quickly making four pieces of tape to block those holes and then it will be time to pour in the silicone. Right, so when I'm pouring silicon rubber, I prefer to kind of stay around the same place. And if I do move where I'm pouring to, I do it very slowly. The thing is, if you pour, just keep in the same spot, it finds its own way around and you're less likely to get trapped air bubbles. So, yeah, try to stay in the same place as much as you can. But if you do need to start moving because one place is filling up too quickly, just do it really slowly and let the silicon find its own way around. You might have noticed that there appears, be, appears to be a lot of bubbles in there. And that's not really anything to worry about. It's because I mixed it for so long. I just wanted to make sure it was thoroughly mixed. It isn't a problem because they do find their own way out. So yeah, don't panic when you see lots of bubbles, it's fine. And certainly you don't need to hit them with a torch or anything like that like you would if you were working with your epoxy resin. You don't need to do anything except what you could do if you want to make sure there's no trapped bubbles is tap the tile that everything's attached to, tap it around a bit, vibrate it and really make sure any trapped bubbles do have chance to escape. But other than that, don't worry about those little micro bubbles that you can see. Right, it's time to demold the mould. And the hardest bit you will find is um, getting the glue off. You don't actually need to get it all off. If you just brick break through one little bit of the hot melt glue with your knife just cut through it and then the rest of it will should pull off quite easily the actual barrier comes away from the silicone really really easily so there you see I've got that glue started once it's started it pulls off with a little bit of force and the rest is just easy peasy I should have mentioned that in the guidelines it says for three to four hours before demolding. I actually waited until the next day. The reason being that I knew that 
Those handles in the other mould were going to need some force to get out and I wanted to make sure it was properly cured, fully, fully cured. Um, cured isn't the right word, vulcanised, <laughs> but fully finished <laughs> before I pulled those handles out uh, to make sure it was extra strong. And the same with the jar, really. It took, with that little plastic bit that got stuck in, uh, I forgot about the plastic insert that was in the jar lid. Um, it took some brute force to get that out and it was fine. The mould really doesn't it's so so strong i was really pleased no problem at all using a little bit of force so there we have the results of the jar and you can see how shiny the silicone is where it's been against glass and it's a little bit more dull when it's been against the plastic so you can really see the results on the surface of the silicone how it picks up every detail Right, on to the handles now. I knew it would be a little bit harder to get the handles out, but actually they weren't that bad at all. All you need to do is just pull the silicone away a little bit and I've made it look a lot harder than it actually should be because I didn't push from the bottom. The trick was that I found at the end was to push from underneath you know, where the bottoms of the handles are. And it comes out so much easier. But yeah, they came out fine. And you can see how much, how rough I was with the silicone and how it was absolutely fine afterwards. So yeah, it gets 10 out of 10, this pure mold silicone rubber. 10 out of 10 for strength. Absolutely great. And there we go. Right, so now I'm going to show you how I made my handles once I had the mould ready. I'm going to try and keep the next parts quite brief because the main purpose of this video was to show you how to make the moulds. Uh, but I knew you'd like to see what I could make in the moulds, so I will be showing you that, but I'm going to do it quite quickly. Now, I decided I would like to have black handles with some abalone shell on the top. And I wanted a good strong black, so I'm using pig pigment paste. And this one is from Resin Pro. Everything you see today is from either from Resin Pro or available from Amazon. And I will put links to everything that's from Resin Pro in the description. And I will also put links to my Amazon storefronts in the description where you can go along and see all the different things I use in my artwork all in one place at Amazon. So two different lots of links because everything's from two different places. So the resin I'm using is Resin Pro's Liquidissima. It's my favourite of their resins. They've got all kinds of resins, <laughs> absolutely loads for different purposes. And I really like this one because it's just perfect for casting and it's really clear and it's really good with the bubbles. You hardly get any bubbles from it. It's really good. So I've mixed in a little bit of black pigment. You really don't need much of this colour fun pigment. And yeah, I just added a little bit more. What you can do is check your stick and see how dark it is on the mixing stick. And that will give you a guide to how if you need any more. It's best to do a little bit at a time rather than adding too much right at the beginning. Just keep adding a little bit and go from there. And then I'm just going to fill up my handle mould but not all the way to the top. I want to leave about two millimetres just at the top so that once this is cured I can add my abalone shell and then a clear layer of resin over the top and that's how simple it is. Once my resin had cured, it was time to add the abalone shell pieces. And as you can see here, I'm using a glue pen. Uh, it's quite quick drying glue. And I thought it would just keep the shell pieces in place. Um, but it didn't actually work very well. It just didn't stick to the resin. Um, so just ignore the fact that you've just seen me do that. <laughs> if you're going to do this, put your abalone shell wherever you want it and then add your clear resin on top. And honestly, it stays in place anyway. So 
yeah, disregard the glue which I used. And here's a little close up of some of the shell pieces, which are from Amazon. And I will put a link to those also in my storefront. The abalone shell slices are all in position now, so it's time to add that final layer of clear resin and it's the liquidissima again from Resin Pro. And I'm just going to carefully go right up to the edge of the cavity. It's very important not to go over the edge because then you'll end up with rough edges. Try to keep just within the cavity. So I've gone right up to the top. Then I will get rid of the bubbles with my heat gun the next day I will demold it. Actually I didn't demold it the next day, I'm fibbing to you. It, I left it two days and the reason was I wanted it to be, the handles to be really properly cured. I didn't want them to be bendy because I knew it would be quite hard to get the handles of the silicon and I didn't want to bend them and make them go out of shape so I gave it two days before I demolded. Two days later and it's time to demold. So the way I do it is to just loosen the mold from around the edges before trying to push them out. So you just pull at all the edges, try to just loosen it as much as you can and then just push from the bottom. And it's quite easy really. It looks quite difficult because I'm do it, doing it under the camera at an angle I wouldn't normally be doing it at. <laughs> Always, it always seems more difficult when you're filming something because you're holding it in a position you wouldn't normally hold it but it actually came out quite easy. Once it's out of the mould if you've got any sharp bits or any bits that have just slightly gone over the top just lightly sand them off and you're good to go. What I actually did do with a different set, which I'll show you in a moment, is I did, um, once it was all out of the mould I found that there was still quite a lip around the edge so I gave it a final layer of resin um, a top coat just on the top surface of the handles and it really finished it off beautifully and you'll see that in a moment so that's probably what I will do with these ones too so here's one of the ones that I'd made previously my first ones that I made and there you can see I've added that top layer and it's a massive improvement. It looks really smooth and it's got that rounded edge now and it just looks really, really pretty. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's okay if you want to put your handles directly into your resin when you're making your resin trays. But what about if I want to screw my handles into something? Well, that's not a problem either because you can purchase these rivet nuts and all you need to do is put them into the mould right at the bottom and then once the resin is cured and you've taken them out you, you can, as long as you just block the hole before you put the resin in and then unblock the hole when you take your handles out of the mould you will be able to use them just like any other handle as long as you have screws to match your rivets. To block the holes in my rivets I used blue tack and I just rolled it into little worm shapes and stuffed it in <laughs> and I'm sure there's a more technical term than stuffed it in but that's what I did. I stuffed it in, squashed it all down till it was all filled up and then trimmed the end so that it was nice and neat and then I had four to put in and that was it. Now I'm going to quickly show you how I made those jars and they are so much fun to make because they're so easy and the results are so brilliant really. It just looks like you've bought a little jar. I just love these. Anyway, I used Liquidissima again and I'm pleased with the results I get from that because the finish is like glass and I wanted the jar to look like the base of it was glass just like the original one. And I'm just running a stick around the inside because there's all those little ridges in there where the two parts are screwed together. So that's the kind of area where you will get bubbles trapped if you're not careful. So I'm just running a stick around those edges and then I'm going to do the other piece which is the top. 
And for the top piece, I'm going to be adding my phosphorescent powder, the same one which the jar is going to store. And that way, I've got the same colour on the lid as there is in the jar, and it's a good guide. So you just add it in the same way as you would with mica powder. I'm quite generous with it. I added two scoops. I really wanted it to glow in the dark quite brightly. So two scoops and then I'm just giving it a good mix around and then I will just pour it in just like I did with the other side. These phosphorescent pigments are really good if you've got anything that you want to be able to see in the dark such as light switches. You could put maybe make a light switch, I don't know, or put something that would be near a light switch made from this. Uh, you can put it in paint and varnish. Uh, people use it on escape routes, but you can use it in your artwork as well. So your artwork glows in the dark. The only thing with it is that it's white during the day. So you'd have to think, get your head around that. But otherwise, it really is absolutely great. And you'll see soon what it looks like in the dark. And as with all the other things that I've been using, well, most of the other things I've been using in this video, this pigment is from Resin Pro. And if you would like to purchase this, I do have a 15% off code, which I will put in the description of the video so that you can go over to Resin Pro and make your purchase and get 15% off. If you decide to make jars just like I have done, I would highly recommend that you leave them about three days before you demold them because the last thing that you want when you demold them is for them to bend out of shape in any way because the top obviously needs to fit nicely to the bottom and if you've distorted it when you took it out, it won't fit together properly. So be really patient before you demold them if you're making jars. And there we have it. It looks just like glass, doesn't it? I love that liquidissima. So there's the jar, and then we'll have a look at the lid. And again, you can see how easily the resin comes out of the pure mould. I, I really am quite happy with this pure mould. It's so strong, because look, it's getting quite a lot of... Um, <laughs> I'm pulling it about quite a lot. It's very, very strong. And I haven't used any release agent at all. It's just resin straight into the mould. And there we have the results there. If you get a little bit of a lip on the top, which you usually do with resin, you can just do a little top coat on the top of your lid if you really want to finish it off nicely. I made a jar for each of the pigments that Resin Pro sent me and here we have all four of them in the daylight. So as you can see there's a little bit of colour to them but they're mostly white. And in a second you'll see the lights go off and you'll see the difference. Oh that's a little, that's my lamp turned off. Uh, wait for the main light to go off and they will glow properly. And there we have it. See how they glow beautifully. My mind is really going over time thinking of pictures that I could do that would come to life at night time and I have got a few ideas so what do you think let me know what you think and here's the tray which I made using the handles which I just made and I also used a different effect for those edges in the video for making that tray so if you would like to see how I made that just click on the link above or in the description. I'll leave the link in the description as well and you can go along and watch the tutorial for the tray. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you haven't already subscribed and you enjoyed it, please do so and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.